What is a video game? That is a question that is admittedly so incomprehensive in its ask that it feels like a waste of time to even ask it, let alone dignify it with an answer. It's like asking somebody, what is water? It's one of those questions that sounds smart in its delivery, but is ultimately just looking for loose, surface-level answers. A video game is a game you can play projected onto a video screen. There. There's your answer. Pretty easy, right? Well, the reason I open with such a simple question is not just to make myself sound profoundly smart, but to provide you, the viewer, with a test. I want to see how you respond to that question. What is a video game to you? Sure, there are plenty of people in the world who would chime in and say that a video game is a waste of time. It's just stupid nonsense meant for kids that for some reason man-children everywhere just can't seem to put down. It makes people lazy and unproductive and serves no other purpose other than to keep you from actually getting a boyfriend or girlfriend or from actually contributing something of worth to society, you pathetic loser. It's funny because the people who say that are usually the same people who have dumped hours upon hours of their lives into watching television, a medium that requires even less of you than video games do, and they see no issue with it. If you aren't one of those people, then maybe you're a different breed. Maybe you're somebody who, when asked, what is a video game, you respond, it's art. Or maybe you take it a step further and say, it's an adventure, or it's life-changing. It's molded me into the person I am now. It's part of me. Hell, it is me. My name is Marky Mark, and I started making videos for this channel over two years ago. Why? Because I love video games. I love them from the very moment I picked one up when I was four years old. And the first title which I just so happened to pick up? Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Sega Genesis. So here's another question for you guys. What was the first video game you ever played? Do you even remember? It's okay if you don't, but just take a guess and then ask yourself this. How did this first game you ever played shape the way you look at games all these years later? I know I'm throwing a lot of questions your way right now, but you gotta understand, they are of great importance. Because it's undeniable that Whatever game you played first, that one that showed up for you before any of the others in your life, that is the one that started your journey. The one that taught you what video games are. It's exactly like how a newborn baby learns about the world. They take the experiences they have during these formative years in their life and they mold that knowledge and organize it in their psyches so that they may better understand the world going forward. And depending on the kind of game you played first, whether it be a puzzle game, a racing game, or a shooter, as a whole it shaped your expectations for games going forward. My first title, Sonic 2, is a platformer. It's a game that has you playing as a sassy blue hedgehog moving through a handful of large, multi-leveled courses in order to make it to the end goalpost. Admittedly, this is an extremely basic first game to have been exposed to at four years old. The goal of making it to the end of each level without dying is incredibly straightforward on paper, and the story keeping everything together, or lack thereof, is almost non-existent. There's no major cutscenes or set pieces aside from a few at the very end that bring any sort of oomph to this story. There's no stakes that are being raised, there's no emotional turning points that really grab you and make you care. The courses themselves are detailed and distinct in their design, and are also laid out in a way that warrants a smooth balance of exploration and straightforward platforming. At the end of the day, Sonic 2 really is just a game about a guy who needs to run to the end of the level to secure victory. There's no special mechanics that make it any more interesting than just that. Except for one. Speed. Fun fact of the day, Sonic the Hedgehog can go really fast. It's what makes him the distinctive icon of gaming that he is today. I'm pretty sure we can all agree that without his speed, Sonic would be nothing. He wouldn't have anything that would make him stand out, nothing that would give him that edge, that trump card over the competition. The same can be said for Sonic 2, honestly. Without the ability to pick up massive amounts of momentum that could send you flying across the map at a moment's notice, this game, for lack of a better term, would be ass. It would have been just another 90s platformer trying to capitalize on the exploding popularity of the genre during that time period. 
It would have been deemed by game journalists and fans alike the absolute worst thing that any piece of media can possibly be labeled as. Generic. Boring. Uninspired. Derivative. Mid. All the buzzwords you can think of that describe something that is generally lame. But, as fate would have it, lame is just about the last word I would use to describe Sonic 2. Okay, I won't insult your intelligence. I know that you know that Sonic 2 on the Genesis is considered by many to be THE best Sonic game ever made. And I really don't think I need to say anything further to back that up. That's how universally loved Sonic 2 is. Where Sonic 1 faltered in its jarring lack of speed-focused gameplay, Sonic 2 stepped up and delivered a much more confident, speed and momentum focused experience, while still maintaining an amazing set of stages that provide plenty of slow, platforming based sections without taking away from that faster dynamic. Where Sonic 3 and Knuckles provided us with a set of stages that you could argue are far too similar in terms of their level design when compared to one another, Sonic 2's stages are much more varied across the board, establishing a sense of creativity and uniqueness between them that makes each one stand out that much more. The point is, Sonic 2 in the eyes of the fanbase is the best Sonic game, period. And if not the best, then for sure a close second to Sonic 3 and Knuckles. So I guess in retrospect, I'd say I lucked out pretty hard with having one of the greatest Sonic games ever be my first video gaming experience. But having said that, what was the experience of playing Sonic 2 like for four-year-old me? Well, to be honest, I could never get past Oil Ocean Zone. The reason was usually because by the time I had gotten to this zone, I had maybe a few lives remaining and no continues to fall back on. You can get extra lives by either finding them hidden around each stage, collecting a minimum of 100 rings, or adding 50,000 points to your overall in-game score. For every 10,000 points, you receive an extra continue. Points are secured by defeating badniks, or finishing an act with rings still in your possession, of which these rings are then added to your overall score at the end of the level. You can also collect mad amounts of points by speeding through a stage in a short amount of time. Go figure. The faster you complete a stage within a certain range of time, the more points you receive. Lastly, you can get another boatload of points by collecting rings and grabbing the Chaos Emerald in each of the special stages. To sum it all up, there are copious amounts of opportunities to stockpile lives and continues that in theory makes it really easy for any average player to do so. But for four-year-old me, that was simply an impossible system for me to navigate. For one thing, my eagerness to blitz through each stage as fast as I could made it pretty much impossible for me to hold on to any noteworthy amount of rings, as I would just keep careening right into every enemy in my path and subsequently lose whatever rings I had on me. This also had the added drawback of slowing me down, making it so by the end of each act I would finish with next to no rings and an embarrassingly slow act completion time. Lastly, I absolutely sucked at the special stages. In the rare times when I would actually have enough rings to play one, which by the way you need 50 by the time you hit a checkpoint to have access to them, I could not for the life of me get past the second one. I could beat the first pretty consistently, but the second? Nope. Now to be fair to four-year-old me, the special stages in Sonic 2 are awful. I think a lot of us can agree that Sonic Team was a little too ambitious with them given the immense graphical and technical limitations of the hardware that ultimately just added up to an environment that is constantly working against you rather than providing you with a fair challenge. Anywho, you add all these things together and you make for a situation where I am racking up minimal amounts of points and receiving next to no extra continues, let alone extra lives. So by the time I hit Oil Ocean, I was left with nothing but the clothes on my back. I simply hadn't been skilled enough at the game to build up a buffer for myself for those later stages, and so when I would somehow still make it to said stages, I was so afraid of dying and therefore losing the few lives that I had, that that fear actually made me play worse, and then I would die. Kids, am I right? And you would think that, since I was in fact four years old, I simply wouldn't have the patience to put up with all this constant hardship that in my prepubescent mind, I would get frustrated and just smash the controller or simply give up and never play the game again. I mean, I was a child who was notably prone to unpredictable fits of rage, so what exactly was it that kept me playing? What was it about Sonic 2 that kept me trying and trying and trying, even though there was absolutely no hope for me of ever beating it? Well, I'll tell you what it was. 
It actually wasn't the prospect of beating the game that kept me going. I actually didn't care about that. I just really liked playing Sonic 2. That's it. I just loved booting up the game on my Genesis, starting from Emerald Hill Zone, and just going. I loved speeding through the loops and seeing how much air I could get. I loved running through these spiral paths. I loved running through the top sections and then falling down to the bottom path where I would have a completely new area to explore. I loved the vibes, the colors, the aura, the sheer freedom that blitzing through these stages brought me. It was like I was going on a big adventure where the only destination was wherever the f I wanted it to be. Obviously, I would actively try to make it to the end goal, but I loved having the freedom to choose the way in which I wanted to get there. And on top of that, having the speed I needed to quickly change up my path with little to no notice and minimal consequence. It was like every stage was an open canvas in which I could paint my own picture of what an adventure looks like. Because in reality, an adventure isn't always point A to point B. There are many twists and turns, things that sidetrack you, that challenge you along the way and force you to grow as a human being. And that is what an adventure is all about, my friends. It's about the journey, not the destination. And having the freedom that comes with being the fastest thing alive? That is way past cool. Because it meant that I could control the journey, and therefore control the entire adventure. So yeah, that is what four-year-old me thought of Sonic 2. Listen, when we are that young, our minds are constantly running wild with zany ideas just like the ones I listed off moments ago. So now that begs the question, what does adult me think of Sonic 2? Oh boy. Are my ideas on this game just as zany as they were over 20 years ago? Let's find out. For starters, it should immediately be noted that yes, Sonic 2 is a much faster experience than its predecessor, and I think we can all agree that was for the better. I am saying this right now. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is better than Sonic the Hedgehog 1. There, I said it. I know, I know, that was a ballsy move on my part, but in all seriousness, Sonic 2 really did benefit from the increase in speed. It allowed for a completely unconventional platforming experience that came with one extra special secret ingredient. Adrenaline. Adrenaline is the very real hormone that Sonic 2's fast-paced style immediately binds itself to. I still to this day get that same rush of adrenaline each time I make my way down Chemical Plant Zone Act 2's massive opening ramp. I still get that same feeling of satisfaction whenever I gain enough speed from that very ramp and fly up high enough to reach that extra hidden life at the top of the next section. I think that is exactly what Sonic 2's biggest strength is, its staying power. It just doesn't get old, those feelings of excitement, that rush of adrenaline from the speed, it never dies out, it never gets less intense. I mean, sure, the same level layouts, set pieces, and map designs do eventually get old after enough times of playing through them. But that raw, cerebral rush you get from just blitzing through the game at the speed of a bullet? That never goes away. I will admit though, Chemical Plant Zone's theme has become a bit grating on the ears in recent times. I don't know if it's because I've just heard it so many times over the years, but there's just something about that high-pitched synth sound in the main melody that my ears just don't agree with anymore. It's almost overbearing in how high-pitched it is and in your face it's trying to be. The music in the rest of the game is obviously going to be of the higher quality kind. That's just a given with Sonic games. Each stage's main theme does an excellent job of matching the atmosphere of its corresponding level. Emerald Hill's theme establishes the stage as the usual happy-go-lucky beginner stage of the game, with the expected upbeat tempo and cheery melodies feeding it through to make for a low-stakes environment that puts the player at ease. Casino Nights theme exemplifies what it means to exist within a dreamy, Las Vegas-style nightlife. And on a somewhat side note, this is hands down my favorite stage to come back to. 
I just find the nightlife vibe to be so soothing, and I think it's an amazing contrast to all the bright lights and flashing colors that pop all over the place. The stage is mapped out with its expected top, middle, and bottom paths, but I just find it to be the most natural and fluid in the way in which its branching paths transition you between them. It often uses thematic set pieces such as pinball pads to help you get up to those higher spots, and even if you do end up dropping down to the bottom path due to a mistimed jump, it never feels like a blatant punishment like it would in other games. I'm more than happy to accidentally start exploring the bottom path, because I know that there will still be plenty of effective platforming sections to keep me engaged, as well as the expected speed sections that keep the adrenaline flowing but don't act overbearing to the platforming. Either way, this theme, I think, makes this stage. Because without it, you would honestly just feel like you're traveling through yet another Sonic 1 psychedelic dreamscape with no context attached to it. And lord knows, the last thing Sonic needs is more drugs. All in all, the music in Sonic 2 highlights one of the most important aspects about the game. It's overall maturity. Because Sonic 2 is pretty much the epitome of what a second game in a series looks like. It's a more mature, more developed, more succinct version of its predecessor, with all the fat being trimmed and nothing but the muscle, making for an experience that is generally just a smooth, low-stakes experience. I think the fact alone that Sonic 2 is such a finely tuned experience makes it one of the most accessible games in the series. From a personal standpoint, it's definitely the one game in the series that I can come back to and blow through in about an hour, multiple times over, and not even bat an eye. It's just such a refined Sonic experience that almost anybody could master it with enough practice. And I have to wonder if whether or not this amount of polish makes it too streamlined of an experience. Does Sonic 2 rely too much on speed in its levels, thereby making the game too easy? Is the game so consistently designed across the board that there are no peaks or valleys to the whole thing? Is Sonic 2 just so well put together that it's almost boring to even speak on? These are the things that my dumb adult brain wonders about when looking at Sonic 2. Because as fun as it is, there's nothing else that really makes Sonic 2 stand out other than it's a good Sonic game. It's that one Sonic game that was really good that came just before the big epic finale Sonic game that basically blew Sonic 2 away with all its pomp and circumstance. Oh god. See, this is what being an adult is like. You take the things you loved as a child and you overanalyze them to the point where they are no longer special to you. Don't get me wrong, I still like Sonic 2 for a number of obvious reasons. But I guess in the grand scheme of Sonic games, Sonic 2 to me isn't as interesting as other titles in the series. This game is a lot like that goody two-shoes kid at school who was nearly perfect in every way. He got good grades, he stayed out of trouble, he had plenty of friends to hang out with, he never did anything wrong, and he actually went out of his way to hug his mother. There wasn't anything really to dislike about the guy, but at the same time it felt like there wasn't anything else to him, because he was just so straight-laced and by the book in the way he lived his life. I also want to make a note that there's nothing wrong with that sort of lifestyle. I promise you, I was not a bully in high school. What I'm trying to say here is... Sonic 2 is good, but it just doesn't stand out anymore. And while that is kind of a real bummer of a situation for me, given the fact that I just got done talking about how important this game was to my childhood, that still doesn't negate all the important lessons about video games that Sonic 2 imprinted on me at 4 years old. Because like I've said time and time again, this was the first video game I ever played. So no matter how overshadowed this game gets to me over time, it will still always be a significant part of the way I understand games. And honestly, I couldn't be more grateful to have had a title like this be my first gaming experience. Because it taught me that games are whatever you make them. And even though my adult brain went and made Sonic 2 kinda mid to me, thanks for that brain, that can always change. Because every video game you play is a blank slate. It's an open adventure just waiting to happen. In the same way that Sonic 2 was that same adventure for me. And when I say that games are what you make them, it should be noted that I don't necessarily mean that just from the literal perspective of the game's content. Obviously, there are some games out there that have specific paths, specific goals, and predetermined gameplay structures that don't really allow you to venture too far outside of that box they've established for you, and that's all well and good. 
What I'm also talking about here is how video games are perceived culturally. You could be one of the many who view video games negatively and see them as nothing but a time waster. They're just meant for losers who have nothing better to do with their time. Oh, and by the way, shoutouts to those types of people. If you're one of those individuals and you're watching this right now, go f*** yourself. And also, thanks for watching. But maybe you're somebody who sees them as art. Art that is meant to be digested by creative minds that can be interpreted in, in a numerous amount of ways. You see it as a fun hobby that you can share with close friends and further build those friendships through the timeless memories you've shared with them playing your favorite multiplayer titles. Or you see it as a way to create new friendships. I mean, there are so many positive outcomes that can come from games and I'm tired of hearing the people who keep saying that there are none to speak of. All you gotta do is look a little deeper. I see video games as an adventure in freedom. And I have Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Sega Genesis to thank for that. And as with every good adventure, there is growth. And growth? That is the spice of life, my friends.